Hello again. Uh, we're working on ellipses here, which is basically uh, like a circle, except it's like stretched. Kind of, so it looks more like an oval. If you think about uh, the Earth uh, revolving around the Sun, uh, yeah, it's a revolution around the Sun, pardon me. It goes in an elliptical pattern. Basically, here's the Sun, and here's Earth. And it revolves in that kind of a pattern. It's not a circle, but it's uh, it's you know it's an elliptical pattern. And actually, it's pretty cool because a lot of uh, sports stadiums that you see are elliptical in nature. They're they're usually not built as circles. They're usually built as an ellipsis. Anyways, so here's the basic formula for an ellipse. It's x minus h uh, quantity squared over a squared plus uh, the quantity of y minus qu uh, k squared over b squared. And it's supposed to equal one when you end up solving for it. Which reminds me, actually, I wrote this example wrong. It's actually supposed to be equal to one. Okay, so um, basically, h and k stand for the center. H stands for the x spot, uh, the x value for the center, and k stands for the uh, y value of the center. And a squared and b squared determine uh, how it looks. But let me go ahead and explain because it's just so much easier if I do. I remember, uh, yeah, well. I've seen it in books before where it's just ugh, it's brutal the way it's put and they put all these formulas, etc., etc. You don't really have to think about it like that. It's, it's really quite easy. Okay. So there is no h value and there's no k value. Technically, it's x plus 0 squared and y plus 0 squared or y minus 0 and x minus 0 squared. So your center is actually located at 0, 0. Okay. Story checks out. Here's what you do if you want to figure out how to graph an ellipse. You take the square root of this number, assuming it's equal to 1, which it is, and the square root of that is 2. It's on the x value. So you go 2 to the left, 2 to the right. You take the square root of this value, which is 4, that means you go 4 on the, uh, the y-axis, both up and down. And this is from the center, mind you. And that's it. That's pretty much how you graph an ellipse. There is one last thing of consideration here. It's got something called foci. If it had one particular point, it'd be called a focus, but it's got uh, two particular points, and that's called a foci. And basically, how you find the foci is this. You take the bigger number in the denominator, and you subtract it by the smaller number in the denominator. Technically, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and solve for the variable. But the way I just tell my students is, take this number, subtract it by this number. Okay, so it's 16 minus 4, which equals 12. After you figure that out, just take the square root. So it's the square root of 12, which uh, is uh, 2 root 3, and root 3 is about 1.71, or 1.7. 2 times uh, 1.7 is about 3.4. And your foci is going to be on the axis that's bigger. So you got this one, which is 4, and you got this one, which was 16. So whichever one's bigger is the one where it goes. So it goes with the y. So your foci is uh, 3.4, like right there. there. And foci are actually pretty interesting. Uh, what they do, uh, determine is, um, uh, here's an example. Uh, if you're watching a football game, and you know two football teams are playing, and they're in the other team's end zone, and what you'll notice the announcers will say, well, now they're in the end zone, now the team can really hear the crowd. And that's why the defense tries to get the... Uh, crowd to, you know, get on the side of the defense to try to distract the offense because sound uh, will perpetuate, well, will not perpetuate, pardon, and that foci is actually in the wrong place. It's 3.4 right there. Uh, sound will be heard best at the foci of an ellipse. So if you've got an elliptical stadium, you can hear sound best at the foci, which is very interesting. There's actually a room in Washington. Uh, it, it, it looks like it's in, it built in an elliptical pattern. And actually, uh, when the House of Representative members and Senate members were speaking, it was this uh, like you know little trade known secret that if uh, somebody was saying something and you wanted to hear what it was because you wanted it to be your business, stand either in this area or this area. No matter where the person was, you could be able to hear the conversation best from either of those two areas. So if somebody was speaking here and you didn't want to look like you were spying on them, go stand where the foci is, and that's where you would hear the best. Uh, amplification of sound. It's really quite cool. So that's, uh, you know, like an application of the foci. It's really quite cool. And ellipse is that. So we're going to move on to this example right here where we got x squared plus 4y squared plus 4x minus 24y plus 24 equals 0. And we're going to figure out how to solve it. 
Now when you're graphing an ellipse, what you want to do is get all the x values together, get all the y values together, and anything without an x or a y, move to the other side. See, it's got to be like x uh, values, y values equals, you know, some number. We'll worry about the a squared and the b squared momentarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the x values together. x squared plus 4x plus blank, and I'll show you what that means in a moment, plus 4y squared minus 24y plus blank equals, and then subtract the positive 24 to the other side, so it's negative 24. Now, now, what you want to do is you want to complete the square. What that's going to do is it's going to get it into vertex form, which is going to make this problem a lot easier to graph. So what I do if I want to complete the square is I take this middle term and I divide it by 2. And I guess I'll do it over there because i got some room. And it's 2. Put that answer in parentheses and then square it afterwards. And 2 squared is 4. So there you go. Uh, this one's a little bit more difficult. What you want to do for this particular value is make sure the y squared is by itself. You don't want a 4 from the y squared. So what you're going to do is you're going to factor out a 4 from these two values here. So if you do that, you're left with y squared minus 6y plus blank. I'm just rewriting this except I'm taking out the 4 from these two terms. And yeah, I can do that. That's perfectly legal. I'm just taking out the 4, but I didn't really change anything because 4 times y squared is 4y squared, and 4 times negative 6y is negative uh, 24y. What you want to do is you want to take this term and divide it by 2. And you're going to get negative 3. Put that in parentheses and square. And the answer is going to be 9. Okay. Eh, you might as well put the rest here. So x squared plus 4x plus 4, I figured out the 4 by completing the square. I factored out the 4 in front of the y squared because I want, uh, when I complete the square, I want it to be y squared, nothing in front of the y squared. And when I do that, I factor the 4 out of the y squared and the 4 out of the uh, negative 24y. So I got y squared minus 6y, and then I completed the square, which was 9, equals negative 24. Let me show you something really quickly, though. So I got x squared plus 4x. Eh, actually, I think I can skip that step. I can factor x squared plus 4x plus 4. And what that factors to is x plus 2 squared. By the way, if this seems foreign, go back to the completing the square section in the quadrate x if you want a little bit of review. Or look in a book or look online, you know, like through Wikipedia and stuff. Okay, plus 4. Factor y squared minus 6y plus 9. That's y minus 3 squared. equals negative 24, but the problem is that I, you know, added a mysterious number here and I added a mysterious number here, so I better add those same numbers here so it offsets the equation. Okay, so I added a 4, and I added a 9, but I actually didn't add a 9. I did add a 4. What I did was I added a 4 times a 9, so I actually added a 36. Four plus thirty-six is forty. Forty minus twenty-four is sixteen. Almost done. What I want to do though is give you a little bit of time to think about this. I'm going to go ahead and erase this because I'm going to need it. When we work with elliptical form, it's supposed to be, our equation is supposed to end up equaling 1. This equals 16. So what we have to do is we have to divide this number by 16. Now if we divide this term by 16, we've got to divide both of these terms by 16 as well. So that's x plus 2 quantity squared over 16 plus 4 over 16 is a fourth, or just y subtract 3 quantity squared over 4, then that's equal to 1. 
Now my center for this ellipse is negative 2, 3. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to graph this bad boy out. That's where my center is. Now for my x values, I take the square root of this number, and it will give me how far it is from the center to the left and to the right. And it's for the left and the right because it goes with the x value. And this one, I take the square root, and it will determine how far it is from the center both up and down. So this one's 4 away. Uh, to the left and to the right. Ugh, my graph is so terrible. One, two, three. There we go. Not terrible, not that terrible. And from this one, it's two spots up and two spots down because I take the square root of this number because it's in a squared and b squared form. So if I want to figure out the a, I gotta take the square root. If I want to figure out the b squared, I gotta take. I'm sorry, the B, I'm going to take the square root. Hmm. Well, I'm certainly not going to get points for a drawing, but basically this looks like a circle except it's extended this way. And the last thing we have to figure out is the foci. And if you want to figure out the foci, just take A squared subtracted by B squared in this case. It's just which one is ever bigger of the two. So it's 16. Subtract 4, which equals 12. And then if you want to figure it out, take the square root of 12. Hey, that's the same thing we did last time. It's about 3.4. So what it is, is it's 3.4 spots away from the center. So i got to go 3.4. 1, 2, 3.4, right there. It's not going to be perfect, unfortunately. 1, 2, 3.4, like right there. There you go. So you went ahead and you got yourself a graph. You got a center. You got two foci, and it's always on the longer of the two axes, uh, the major axis. Uh, the smaller one's called the minor axis. And you got four uh, vertices right there. And that's just basically where the graph you know, hits those points. So that's a basic introduction to ellipses. It's actually really cool, you know. If you want to go to an elliptical, you know, like next time you're like in a stadium or something that's shaped like an ellipse, go ahead and test it out. Like I was at a concert actually when I figured this out. And, you know, like it was an open concert and we got to walk wherever we wanted to go. So I was looking for the best sound and I happened to hear it at one of the foci. So, yeah, I mean, always can use math. One of the strangest times ever. Uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.